I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this video may or may not make you upset. What's going on everyone, it's Fuzzy. Welcome back to another Major League Baseball video. Today is gonna be pretty interesting because we're gonna be talking about a very heated discussion. The best players that are not in the Hall of Fame, whether it's because of cheating. And when I say cheating, I can mean both with steroids or betting on baseball, AKA Pete Rose versus Barry Bonds. So those will be the first two players that we talk about because I do wanna start the video off with a bang. So the first player, Pete Rose, second will be Barry Bonds. But before we actually start the video, make sure you guys slap a like on this one. Subscribe if you wanna see more baseball content because I. I'm the perfect guy for you, whether it's MLB The Show, in real life baseball challenges, or talking about baseball, I got you. Also guys, if I forget to mention anyone, let me know in the comment section down below because there's a couple different reasons why I might not mention someone. For example, I'm not gonna mention Mariano Rivera because he's definitely gonna get in, or I might not mention Jeff Kent because I don't think he has the stats. So whether I miss someone because of any of those that I just mentioned, let me know in the comment section down below and your reason why they should be in the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose has a 79.7 .7 career war in 14,000 at-bats, he has 4,250 six base hits. He has a 303 lifetime batting average. He has 160 home runs to go along with 1300 RBIs, but he's also an MVP, a 17 time all-star, a two time gold glove, a world series MVP, a rookie of the year. He's won the world series three times. He's a silver slugger and he's won the batting title three separate times. The unfortunate thing about Pete Rose is yes, he has all the stats. He is a hall of fame talent in all of our eyes, but the fact that he bet on baseball as a manager, that is the only thing that is holding Pete Rose back from being a hall of famer. So what I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below is is do you think Manfred should reinstate this man? We all know his passion in life was baseball. He bled for this game. So should he be reinstated or should he be left off the candidacy? Let me know. Again, guys, I wanted to start off the video with a bang. So I cannot believe that I'm saying this, but a man who has 162.8 career war with 2,000 runs, almost 3,000 hits with 2,935. He has a career 298 batting average, 762 home runs, almost 2,000 RBIs. He has 514 stolen bases. He's a seven-time MVP, an eight-time Gold Glove winner, a two-time batting title champion, a 14-time All-Star, a 12-time Silver Slugger, and a three-time Major League Player of the Year. We're talking about Barry Bonds. He has a career OPS over 1,000. Again, just like Pete Rose, there's only one thing holding him back, and that was because Barry Bonds has speculation of taking steroids. So let me know in the comment section down below, should Pete Rose be reinstated? Should Barry Bonds be in the Hall of Fame? One last player that I do wanna mention in this same breath as Pete Rose and Barry Bonds is our man, Roger Clemens. He was an MVP. Yes, he won the MVP as a pitcher. He was a two-time Triple Crown winner as a pitcher. He won the World Series twice. He was an All-Star MVP once. He won the Cy Young seven times. He was an 11-time All-Star. He led the league in ERA seven different times, and he was a Major League Player of the Year once. So Roger Clemens, one of the greatest baseball players all around of all time. He had a 139.6 career war, 354 wins to 184 losses, a lifetime 3.12 ERA, and he had 4,672 strikeouts. My gosh, Roger Clemens was insane. There are a few other players that we're gonna save until the end of the video because for right now, I wanna focus on the players that in the eyes of many play the game the right way. I'm putting up air quotations, the right way. So at this point, the first player that we're gonna have to mention is probably someone that you may or may not have ever heard of. His name was Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges was born April 4th, 1924 in Princeton, Indiana. So that's probably the reason why you've never heard of him. But the reason why I wanted to bring him up is because he did miss his age 20, 21, and 22 year season because he was in the military. So who knows what he could have had because he ended his career with a 44.9 war. He had 1,921 hits, a 273 batting average, and 370 home runs. So if he did not miss those two to three seasons, who knows what Gil Hodges could have done. But he was an eight-time All-Star, a three-time Gold Glove winner, and a two-time World Series champion so he definitely needs consideration but he's not gonna get in because obviously he's been off the bat for quite some time but what do you guys think is Hodges a Hall of Fame talent if this man does not make the Hall of Fame this year I will riot the reason why I say he needs to make it this year is because Edgar Martinez is in his last year of Hall of Fame candidacy and if he doesn't make it he's off the ballot he has a 68.4 career war he has 2247 base hits a lifetime 312 batting average with a 933 OPS that's insane to go along with the fact that he was a seven-time all-star a two-time batting title champion and a five-time silver slugger. He is one of the top two best designated hitters of all time, whether you want to say it's Edgar Martinez or someone like David Ortiz. At the top of their games, I'm not really sure that you would want one over the other, but that's just my opinion. So this year, Edgar Martinez needs 
to be in the Hall of Fame, but if you guys disagree, again, let me know. Don Mattingly was robbed of a Hall of Fame career because his body was not nice to him, whether it was back injuries or knee injuries. He could not stay healthy past his 14th season, but in those 14 seasons, he was amazing. He had a 42.4 war. He had 2,100 base hits, a 307 batting average, 222 home runs. He had 14 stolen bases, so we know he's not going to steal you a bag, but he had an 830 lifetime OPS. Oh yeah, he also won MVP. He was a nine-time gold glove. He was a six-time all-star, and he was a three-time silver slugger. So really, all that means is whether you needed a first baseman to get you a base hit, a home run, or get a really good play at first base, he was your man. He could do everything. There is no shame in saying that you do not know who the next player is. We're talking about Lou Whitaker. I'll be honest, I'm 22 years old, and I've heard of the name before, but I did not realize how good he was. Lou Whitaker had a 75.1 career war. I bring up war because it's like the nerd stat up today, and a lot of people care about it in the millennial age. So I bring it up. 75.1 is insane. He had 2,369 base hits. He had a 276 batting average, which is a little bit low. He had 244 home runs and 143 stolen bases to go along with a 789 OPS. And the reason why I say it like that is because he was a second baseman. So he was really good at a lot of different things. He was also a rookie of the year, a 1984 World Series champion, a four-time Silver Slugger, a five-time All-Star, and a three-time Gold Glove winner. So Lou Whitaker, he's not on the ballot anymore. But honestly, I just brought him up because I want you guys to know about this man. He should be in the next MLB The Show 19 game because he'd be one of the best second basemen we've ever had. Oh my gosh, I can't even, this is just, this is a crime. This is a crime. I don't know how Fred McGriff is not in the Hall of Fame already. He's still on the ballot. I'm not sure how many years left he has, but the fact that he has a 52.6 career war, which is not the highest that we've seen even in this video, but with 2,490 base hits, he's almost at 2,500. He has a 284 lifetime batting average with 493 home runs, 1,500 RBIs with a lifetime OPS of 886. Oh yeah, he's a five-time All-Star, a three-time Silver Slugger. He's won a World Series and he was an All-Star Game MVP. So I'm not sure why or what these guys are looking at. It's just maybe they're the, maybe they're the war nerds, okay? Maybe they're the ones that are ruining the Hall of Fame. But in my opinion, I feel like Fred McGriff is getting robbed. What do you guys think? This is one where I just look at it and I cannot believe that he hasn't made it just yet because 493 home runs, a lifetime OPS of 886 and a 52.6 career war. That's just, to me... 2400 hit. Oh, geez, I can't even talk anymore. I'm so upset. Dale Murphy was a two time All Star. He won the Gold Glove five separate times. He was a seven time All Star, a four time Silver Slugger. He had a 46.5 career war. I think the only thing that holds Dale Murphy back is the fact that he only has 2100 hits and a 265 lifetime batting average. He did get injured toward the later half of his career, so he wasn't able to pad his stats. He did have 398 home runs. He had a lifetime OPS of 815. So if he didn't get injured, maybe he would have reached that 2200 hits and 400 home runs. So who knows what his candidacy would have been after that. Dave Parker is almost in the same boat as Dale Murphy because he missed his age 30 and 31 year old season. Now he still put up some monster stats and when I say monster stats 2,712 hits, a 290 batting average, 339 home runs, almost 1,500 RBIs. He had 154 stolen bases, an 810 career OPS. He won an MVP. He was a two-time World Series champion, a three-time Silver Slugger. He won the All-Star MVP, a seven-time All-Star, a three-time Gold Glove winner, and a two-time batting champion. I feel like I just rattled off Barry Bond numbers. Now, of course, he does not have 700 home runs, but the fact that Dave Parker has almost 3,000 hits, he has almost 400 home runs in 19 years, and he missed his age 30, and 31 season. I don't know how this man is not on the Hall of Fame. It makes no sense to me. Can you guys like at least let me know in the comment section down below why Dave Parker is not on the Hall of Fame? I would love to know. In my opinion, Bernie Williams is one of the most underrated outfielders of all time. I think the reason why he's not given much credit is because he was on the Yankees, but he was very, very quiet. So he didn't really say much, but he had a 49.6 career war. He had 2,300 base hits, a 297 lifetime batting average, 287 home runs, 1,200 RBIs. He did have an 858 OPS. He was a five-time All-Star, a four-time Gold Glove winner. He won the batting title. He won the World Series four times because he was on the Mighty Yankees. He was a Silver Slugger and ALCS MVP. So I don't think he has the stats, but Bernie Williams, honestly, is one of the best outfielders, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. The next two players that we're going to be talking about were actually teammates. The first one is going to be Larry Walker. I bring him up first because he's been on the ballot for quite some time and he just hasn't been able to get in. Why? I'm not really too sure. Maybe it's because people have that idea that the Coors effect is a real thing and it should keep you out of the Hall of Fame, which kind of sucks because Larry Walker had a 72.7 career war. He won an MVP. He was a seven-time Gold Glover. He was a five-time All-Star. So he won the Gold Glove more than he was an All-Star, which is insane. He was a three-time Silver Slugger, a three-time batting champion. He had 383 home runs to go along with a 313 batting average. He had a 965 OPS for his career. Maybe, maybe the thing that holds him back is his 2,100 base hits. But Larry Walker, if he does not get in the Hall of Fame, I mean, what do you want? But I don't want to be biased because I don't like talking about the course field effect. But honestly, it is somewhat real. I do want to be 
honest. It's something that we'll have to talk about when Nolan Arenado retires. So for example, Larry Walker in 986 home games, so he played more games away than he did at home. So in 986 Coors Field games, he had 1,193 base hits, 215 home runs, 747 RBIs, and an OPS of 1,068 with a 348 batting average. If we go to his away stats where he played more games, he had less home runs, less RBIs, less stolen bases, more caught stealing, more walks, more strikeouts, and he had a 278 batting average with an 865 OPS. 865 is still really good, but the fact that he's, yeah, maybe, Maybe you do have to consider that. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? That's also something I want to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Should Larry Walker, Nolan Arenado, and Todd Helton be hindered by their course field effect, or should they be allowed just kind of in because they're good either way? Todd Helton had a 61.2 career war. He had 2,500 hits, a 316 batting average, 369 home runs, 1,400 RBIs. He had a lifetime OPS of 953. He was a three-time Gold Glover as well, so he could do anything. Now, if I give you the stats, everyone's going to say, yes, that sounds like a Hall of Famer, but then if we bring up the course field effect, Effect, which again, I don't like talking about it because it kind of takes the fun out of what they did for baseball. But in 1,141 games at home, he had 227 home runs, 859 RBIs, he had 514 strikeouts, he had a 345 batting average and a 1,048 OPS. Now, if we go to his away stats where he played about 40 games less, he had less home runs by about, oh my gosh, almost about 100 home runs, 300 less RBIs. Oh gosh, an 855 OPS and a 287 batting average, which is still really good. 142 home runs, 547 RBIs. That's still really good with an 855 OPS. But when you compare that to 227 home runs, 859 RBIs, and a 1,000. 48 OPS. I guess it's a real thing, but it's just, it's so boring to talk about. Ethan Hernandez was an MVP. He won the World Series twice. He was a two-time Silver Slugger, a five-time All-Star. Oh yeah, he won 11 gold gloves. And he also had a batting title with a 60.4 career war. He had 2,100 base hits, which might hold him back, but he also had a 296 batting average. Yes, he only had 162 home runs and only a thousand RBIs, which is still, honestly, that's still really good. And the fact that an 821 OPS, he could do it in the batter's box. And of course, with those 11 gold gloves he could do on the field. So in my opinion, is Keith Hernandez a Hall of Famer? Maybe, but he's definitely on the fence. One of the fastest players in Major League Baseball history and one of the most exciting in my opinion, Kenny Lofton was a six-time All-Star, a four-time gold glove winner. He had a 68.3 career war, which is amazing. A 299 career batting average with 2,428 base hits. He had 130 home runs, which is not too bad for a little guy with only 781 RBIs, which again, he was mainly a leadoff hitter. So who really cares about the RBIs? He had 622 stolen bases. Again, Again, he's not going to have the highest OPS as a leadoff little guy, but still, Gold Glove winner, really fast. Kenny Lofton got you a bunch of base hits. Not sure why this guy's not in the Hall of Fame. If you play MLB The Show, you probably know who this guy is. If not, this might be the first time that you heard of his name. Luis Tiant was a pitcher that you know played a while ago, but he was a three-time All-Star. He led the league in ERA twice. He had a 66.5 career war. He had a 229 to 172 losses win-loss record, a 3.3 lifetime ERA with almost 2,500 strikeouts. He had a 1.1 one nine whip honestly what how is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? What the heck is that? I would say the only thing that really kept him back from being a Hall of Famer was his losses because he did have 172 losses. But if you look at his stats in 1969, he had a 3.71 ERA, which is kind of middle of the road, but he had 20 losses. I don't think that a 3.71 ERA usually equates to 20 losses. So maybe the guy just had bad luck, but I would say his win-loss record is probably the reason why he's not in the Hall of Fame. The next player that we're going to talk about is a very interesting case because I'm going to read off his stats and you'd probably think that he had close to 100 war, but that's not the case. Steve Garvey was an MVP. He won the World Series in 1981. He was a two-time NLCS MVP. He was a 10-time All-Star with four gold gloves under his belt. And he also won the All-Star Game MVP twice. So if I read off his stats that he had almost 2,600 base hits, a lifetime 294 batting average, 272 home runs, and over 1,300 RBIs, he did have a 775 OPS. So maybe that's why his war is only at a 38.1, which is just dumbfounding. The fact that he had almost 2,600 base hits, almost 300 home runs, he won the gold glove four times. I don't know why his war was so low, but I don't know. The war is a weird stat, but what do you guys think? Will Clark is almost the complete opposite of Steve Garvey. He has a 56.5 career war. He has less base hits. He has a higher batting average. He has more home runs. He has less RBIs. He has a higher OPS. He was a six-time All-Star, a two-time Silver Slugger. He only won one gold glove, which is still a really good accomplishment, and he only had that one NLCS MVP. So Will Clark versus Steve Garvey, again, kind of the same player and stats, but the war on Will Clark is so much higher. 
Again, the worst stat is a little bit weird to me. I'm still getting used to it, but oh, Will Clark with those stats, yes, he is off the Hall of Fame ballot already, but in your opinion, do you think Will Clark was a Hall of Fame talent or not? I'm curious. Lance Berkman in his prime was one of the most feared hitters in all of baseball. He had a 52.1 career war, 1,900 base hits, so he's probably not going to get in just on that merit alone, but he did have a 293 career batting average with 366 home runs, over 1,200 RBIs, and he had a lifetime OPS of, get this, 943. That is crazy good. I hope you guys understand that a 943 OPS is insane. He was a six-time All-Star. He won the World Series in 2011. So Lance Berkman as a hitter, probably a Hall of Fame talent, but his body did not really keep up with his skills. He kind of faded away towards the end of his career. But in my opinion, was he one of the better hitters that we've ever seen? Yes. Give him that. Omar Vizquel is a very interesting case as well, just like Steve Garvey. The stats are there, but there's a few other things that we have to consider. So yes, he has a 45.6 career war. Awesome. He has 2,800 base hits. Awesome. Almost at 2,900. He has a 272 batting average. Not the best, but it's still pretty good. He has 951 RBIs. Cool. 404 stolen bases. He won the gold glove 11 times. So you would think that he's a Hall of Famer, right? He had a 688 career OPS. He played a million years in Major League Baseball. So that's one of the reasons why he was able to accumulate so many base hits. So let me know in the comment section down below. This is also a very interesting one and I'm curious to see what you guys think. Is Omar Vizquel a Hall of Famer or do you think that he was aided by the fact that he played a bajillion years? So we started off the video with a bang talking about players that should or should not be on the Hall of Fame because of cheating or anything along that nature and the next couple players they're not going to be different. So we want to start the video with a bang. We're going to end it with a bang and the first one being Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe Jackson was born in 1887. One of the things that I learned about Shoeless Joe is that he could barely read or write. That was why his autograph was worth so much. But he had a 62.2 career war. He had 1,700 base hits in 13 years. He only had that 54 home runs, but you know, back in the day, not many guys hit home runs unless your name was Babe Ruth or Roger Maris. He had a 356 lifetime batting average and a 940 OPS. But again, just like Pete Rose, he was busted for cheating and gambling in baseball. That's the only reason why his name is left off the Hall of Fame ballot. And in my opinion, yes, he was a Hall of Fame talent, but with Pete Rose and Shoeless Joe, it's just that question. Should they be reinstated? Should they be left off forever into oblivion of baseball? What do you guys think? The next four guys I'm going to talk about, I'm going to put them all on the screen at one time. We're talking about Sammy Sosa, Rafael Palmero, Manny Ramirez, and Big Mac. What do you guys think about these guys? Should they be in the Hall of Fame? Yes, they all have amazing stats, whether it's Mark McGuire and his home runs, Sammy Sosa and his 609 home runs with almost 2,500 base hits, or is it Rafael Palmero with his over 500 home runs and over 3,000 base hits? Is it Manny Ramirez because he was so good for so long, starting with the Indians and then the Red Sox and then all of these things you do have to consider. Also, they did steroids. Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm pretty sure that they did. That's my opinion. If you don't agree, let me know in the comment section down below. So Barry Bonds, Rafael Palmero, Sammy Sosa, Big Mac, Manny Ramirez, A-Rod. Should they be in the Hall of Fame or not? The last player that we're going to talk about is someone that kind of ruined his Hall of Fame chances by his own doing. Just like Josh Hamilton and Drugs, Dwight Gooden did not have the best off the field record. Dwight Gooden did have 194 wins compared to 111 losses. He had a 3.51 ERA, which is really, really, really good. In 1985, he had a 24 and 4 record with a 1.53 ERA. The year before that, as a rookie, he had a 17 and 9 record and a 2.6 ERA. So Dwight Gooden was one of the best overall pitchers of all time. Now, the only thing again that is holding him back is the fact that his career did kind of tail off. In 1995, he missed all of Major League Baseball. The year he came back, 1996, he had a 5.01 ERA. The next year, 4.91, then 3.76, and then back up to 6.26 so he never really recovered after his injury if he did who knows what could have happened if it wasn't for drugs and injury and all that different stuff but uh yeah Dwight Gooden is he a hall of famer or not the last six players that I just want to throw out there as honorable mentions, I just want to put them out there so you guys don't hate me for them because I'm sure if I don't include them, you guys will let me know in the comment section down below. But the guys I didn't want to go too in-depth were Jeff Kent, Andrew Jones, Billy Wagner. I think Billy Wagner should get in eventually. Lee Smith, Mike Mussina, and Andy Pettit. I think all of those guys had amazing careers. But again, I'm going to turn it back to you. Should they be Hall of Famers? Should any of the players that we mentioned in today's video be in the Hall of Fame? Give me all of your players. Give me your reasons why. And that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been Fuzzy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.